apologize for my hair, but this is what happens when I visit my parents and I only bring dry shampoo. Hello again, friends. Today I have another fun or dark review for you um, of a book that I recently finished. Uh, it took me quite a while because it was not at all what I was expecting and I was really excited to read it based on the title and then it just turned into something totally different than what I was imagining it would be and that book is We Are All Completely Beside Ourselves by Karen Joy Fowler. This book follows the main character Rosemary Cook and her family uh, through the time that she is a very small child um, to the time that she uh, graduates college and moves on with her life and does several other things, begins her career, etc, etc, um, and the sort of dysfunctional family that she has. Rosemary, as a child, was a kid who couldn't really stop talking. She was just non-stop babbling about anything and everything, and people would just tell her, hey, slow down, stop talking, if you're gonna tell me a story, start in the middle. So that's what happens uh, the way that this book is told. It's told entirely from Rosemary's perspective, um, and she says that I am going to start in the middle because that is what everyone told me to do as a child. This book begins sort of while she is in college, and she meets this kind of crazy uh, drama major girl named Harlow, um, and they wind up sort of causing a scene in their college dining room. And it continues from there where Rosemary explains to you several pieces about her life that sort of put her into the state of mind that she was in when she helped Harlow cause this scene in college. The most interesting thing about this book to me is uh, the progression of the story and how she sort of starts in the middle of a lot of different stories and rewinds and tells you the beginning and then at the end tells you the end of all of those stories. And they're all the same story but they're all different plot facets of her sort of lifelong tale. It's a curious little writer's trick that I think Karen Joy Fowler employs because she's trying to um, emulate the way that Rosemary spoke as a child in the way that she tells the story as a whole. And while it is interesting and creative, I also found it very confusing, but I also think that it made the story a little bit darker. Uh, there were moments where Rosemary could sort of start speaking and then bring you off into this tangent of sort of a, a good-natured happy place and then she would sort of back up and say but this is what I didn't say because when I was younger I was told not to say half of the things that I said because people didn't want to listen to me talk and so here's what I didn't say in the story and it can get very confusing to figure out what actually got said in what order uh, but eventually you do get all of the information. So Rosemary's life has been sort of broken apart by the fact that when she was a child uh, her family was one of, I guess, several in the 70s. I need to do some more research about this. This is a very inspiring book in a lot of ways. Um, but her family was one of the few families in the 70s that um, was able to take care of a chimpanzee from the very beginning of its life and raise it alongside uh, one of their own children as a human being in their home. And I guess this was something of a, not a popular, but definitely sort of a fad scientific experiment at that time. Uh, so Rosemary's life is definitely uh, sort of overshadowed by this overwhelming feeling that she has um, a sister named Fern, and Fern happens to be a chimpanzee. What happens with Fern and what happens throughout Fern's life and Rosemary's life and how they differ and how they are the same is the general idea of the novel. The novel is very, very well written. It's also very sort of disturbingly written. Um, there is a lot of discussion around Rosemary's brother Lowell, uh, who is a human, and he is older than she, and he um, sort of winds up having these very, very intense feelings about Fern and the way that she is treated uh, sort of later on in the story. And this book brought to light a lot of ideas in my mind about animal cruelty and sort of what that has become in today's present age. I think a lot of that stems uh, from Lowell's character for sure. Um, so I've been pondering a lot of that since reading this book. How we view each other as human beings is also something that came to the forefront in this story. Um, as John Green likes to say, how do we assign personhood to one another? Particularly since one of the characters in this story is not what most people would consider a person. Family dynamics also play a huge role in this, what the role of each person in the family is in this story and what they provide to each other um, never stops being an underlying theme. And I think that Karen Joy Fowler um, definitely 
thought it through from the very beginning about how she was going to weave that into the whole piece of text and it's very very well done. But overall I gave this book uh, only three out of five stars. Um, I, I found it to be definitely darker than I had intended. It was not, uh, not at all what I expected for sure um, and I don't feel like it really sort of captured my interest in the best way that it could have. It certainly sparked a lot of other interests, um, but it was just sort of a, a fall down a, a path of sadness, I think, in the end. It's not particularly an uplifting book. Um, the, the tone is not impressively pleasant, uh, so if you're looking for that, this is not the book for you, um, but it is very, very well done. Um, as you can tell, it's won the, uh, the Penn Faulkner Award for Fiction, um, so if you are looking for something uh, dark and haunting, um, and as Alice Siebold says, disturbing in material, uh, this may indeed be the book for you. So in the comments, uh, I have been asked on a couple of occasions to start speaking louder uh, because apparently I am very difficult to hear in some instances, so I have very much tried um, to make that better in this video, uh, but if it's still hard to hear me, uh, please do let me know down in the comments. I hope you're having lovely weeks and lovely lives. As always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you very soon.